Hi friends, you have a leather project in mind and you want to know how you can select the best leather hide for that project, so you're in the right video. We will start talking through the steps that you approach the selection process and make a good choice for your project in mind. First, you need to know what kind of look you're going for in the project. So let's take an example um, project and then we illustrate these steps on those two examples. Let's say we have two projects in mind. One, we want to make a wallet that looks rustic, it's casual, it's daily. We're going to go for that rustic look, maybe crazy horse finishes and things like that. And the second project we have, we're going to make a pet folio for more of a professional setup and we want to go for more classic, shiny, full grain look to illustrate that professionalism and cleanliness a little bit more, not a sloppy look. So two projects require two different types of look choices and you start with that and look means the finish of your leather the feel of your leather and that's going to be determining the keywords you're looking for if you're doing this shopping online or in person you can start talking about a rustic finish a pull-up finish a crazy horse finish or, or suede maybe if you're going for that rustic and daily look but on the other hand, if you're going for that um, standard and classic leather look, then you're gonna start talking about full grain, aniline, semi-aniline, top grain, even maybe embossed uniform finishes for that leather choice. So let's get um, two leathers off the rack, just relying on the, the look of them. First, let's get this full grain wedge time we have right here. It's very shiny, it's beautiful. Uh, side here we have it's a huge side by the way let's open it up real quick so this is two hides rolled together it's a full grain um, glazed vegetable tan black cow hide it's definitely suitable for that standard and classic look leather projects and now you identified this leather you you started with the look in mind then you go for the second step which is the characteristics of this leather and what do we might mean by the characteristics is the substance of the leather the temper of the leather and the overall reaction to to touch and feel so the substance this is about two millimeters five ounces again this is very important if you're trying to go for a very minimal and thin a leather requiring project this might be too much you might need to get it split down to thinner layers uh, but for most projects two millimeters will be pretty good five ounces will be pretty suitable for any kind of other projects you're working on and <clears throat> after that the softness the stiffness the stretch factor of the leather um, once you bend it and then bend it backwards what happens to the grain do you see a mark and is it pleasant it's not pleasant you assess all these characteristics next and you go for the final step when you're picking the actual hide if you're looking for one or if you receive the full batch from the tannery how do you assess the quality of your leather hides then we get to the point where we inspect the cuttable area of the leather so where, what do we what do we mean by cuttable area it's just basically looking over the entire hide starting from top to bottom seeing all the imperfections you know there's little um, scars over here in the neck there will be a lot because the animals get scratched themselves by the by the thorns bushes trying to itch and there is bite marks um, there is a little other diseases over here these are the things you're not going to be able to cut you go for the the flanks of the animal like this this is an empty space this is loose, naturally loose. Not all leathers has, uh, because of the tanning process, has this. But if you have too much of it, you know, it could be like this big, and there is this much of space that you cannot cut. So that's not a good thing. You look for all that uniform fullness of the leather, other imperfections, maybe holes, or the flashing marks that the, the knife go too deep in the back that reflects on top, making a vulnerable area. That's an unc uncuttable space and you basically look all over to see how much of this hide you can cleanly put your patterns and get 
uh, usage, get yield out of it. Anywhere between 80-85% is a good, good ratio. Anything above that, you're looking at a beautiful hide. So that's the next step you're looking at. And let's go back to our second project, the rustic wallet. And if that was the case, I would go for a rustic finish, which is the crazy horse in my one of my favorite finishes here. And we're gonna make a wallet, so I don't need as thick as two millimeters here. I pick a crazy horse off my rack right here. This is actually one of my first leather selections and all-time bestseller, a chestnut color. We check the thickness of it. This is 1.6, 1.7, so it's about four, four and a half ounces. This is good for wallet projects. The fullness is pretty good. I, I like the, the temper, the, the non-stretch features of this leather. I love the reaction to bending and that color changes because of the nature of Crazy Horse Finish the scratching and being able to bring back those scratches by dynamic oils in the leather so the look and feel wise this leather looks perfect for my rustic project in hand and now let's say i received this hide or i found this in the pile in the tannery or shopping in tandy stores so i'm checking the is this the best one is this the one i want to pick I see it's there is some imperfections but it's a wallet project so I can go around it my patterns are not so big I can get small pieces around these imperfections the leather is pretty full going all the way to the edges of this hide so these are all good things I'll be able to cut patterns all the way towards the corners of the hide and I don't see much more imperfections and the ones I see actually enriches because it's a rustic crazy horse finish that's what I'm looking for anyways and this is a good one so I will pick this one this is the approach um, I will recommend you to have for your leather selection in leather projects you have in mind first determine what you're trying to achieve with that craft what's the look is going to be like then pick those finishes and start your search from there. And then go one step down, once you identify the finish and leather, then you look for the substance, how thick it is, how soft, how stretchy it is for that project in hand. Once you've found the fit, then you go for picking the exact hide or assess the quality of the one you received by checking that cuttable area, the surface, yield uh, efficiency of the leathers in front of you hopefully this is going to help you approach with more comfort when you're looking for new leathers for your new projects and to get more content like this please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so every time we post new content you get a notification thank you